live from the morning skate. And Ken, I said in the intro there, teams are panicking. It looks like from the morning skate you are currently at, the Golden Knights are panicking a little. Uh, there's a lot going on here. I was not sure what we were going to get, and there is a lot going on. Aiden Hill is the starter. He's going to make his first start in the postseason after Logan Thompson was phenomenal in game three. And I didn't think he was that bad in game four. I Pretty wild that they're doing that. There's a shakeup to three of the four lines to two of the three pairs. There's multiple lines that have never played together. There's multiple pairs that have never played together or one pair that hasn't played together. It's, it's a lot going on, and it looks quite a bit different than what you're seeing there on the screen. So considering how the first two games went, they obviously win both on the road in Dallas. They drop both at home. Is this level of panic warranted? Was their play, did their play fall off that hard in games three and four that they should be doing this? Game three was really bad. Game four was really not as bad. They had two different leads in that game. They just didn't really have the push in the third period that you would expect from a team trying to get back into the game. I understand where it's coming from. Like they have not been the better team at five on five. And when they're good, they usually are the better team at five on five. So I get it. But it's a lot. It's a new first line. It's a first liner going to the fourth line. It's still having the situation where Carlson can't take draws. You have to have an extra center with him. They're putting in a rookie that hasn't played in a playoff game at all in Pavel Dorofiev. So there's, there's quite a bit going on. Hannafin and Hutton are playing together. That's never happened. So there is, there is a lot. Is it worth it? Is it, was it necessary? Uh, I'm like on the fence there. Yeah, and I, I mean, we're getting live reaction in the moment as well. I love that we can hear the sticks and pucks banging behind you. Um, with Aiden Hill, like, is there maybe a little bit of this that, you know, they're like uh, the Boston Bruins, right? They just said, hey, we had a rotation during the season. Let's keep our guys comfortable. Is this maybe not so much a comment on Thompson's play in last game and maybe more of like, a, hey, we wake up the room a little bit and we give Logan Thompson a breather in the middle of a best of seven series? Maybe a little bit, but I think it's more so a case of Bruce Cassidy thinks Aiden Hill is better. The entire season, Bruce Cassidy has done everything he can to make Aiden Hill the starter. At times, Phil has taken that and run with it. Then he got hurt, and when he was hurt down the end of the season, he did not play very well when he came back right before the postseason, and it was real clear it had to be Thompson's job. So I think they've kind of been waiting for this moment. I think you might be pushing it a little bit. One of the things Cassidy said before this series is when you go from goalie to goalie, your team has to be completely bought in. I would be a little bit surprised if there's complete buy-in after the games that Logan's given. I don't think Logan Thompson has lost them a game in this series, and now he comes out and Aiden Hill goes back in. Remember Aiden Hill's last game is the reason we're here in the first place. They lost to the Ducks, and he gave up two terrible goals. We could be or should be in Edmonton. If not for that, and that was we're almost two weeks ago now. I'm in Edmonton. There is a bunch of snow on the ground. You oh, are I'm happy. I'm so happy I'm not. Yes. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. you. Thank you, not. Victor Arvidsson. I love you. Uh, just one more, and I want to ask you about the flip side of this matchup. It's a great pushback by the Dallas Stars on the road. What about their comeback in these last two games is maybe the most impressive and maybe from the Golden Knights perspective, concerning about how well the Dallas Stars are playing? I think the, the biggest thing in game three was they really started to get transition going. Vegas's whole plan in this series was to limit that transition. They thought if they can just keep them in the zone, they'll be able to kind of box out in the middle of the ice and do what they need to do. That did not happen in game three. Game four was better, but in game four, you started to see the depth of Dallas kind of take over a little bit. Vegas's middle six did not have a very good game. Their, the bottom pair started to, to get beat up a little bit. And you started to see that depth that Dallas has been talking about all season make a huge difference. And I think that's the biggest change is you're starting to see more Dallas players play well and more Vegas players not play up to the standard that we've expected. We haven't seen the best out of Mark Stone. We haven't seen the best out of Tomas Hurdle. William Carlson hasn't been out of his best because he's injured and can't take face-offs. Clearly something going on there. So there's a lot going on here that it is starting to kind of tilt back towards Dallas because both of these teams are really deep and really, really good. Ken Bolke from Sinbin Vegas. You squeeze us in during a morning skate. You're an absolute rock star. Enjoy the game, and thanks for doing this. Take it easy.
What's up, hockey fans? If you enjoyed that video, then you need to be hitting the subscribe button right here at Daily Faceoff. Exclusive interviews and analysis from our hockey insider, Frank Saravalli, fantasy updates from Brock Sagan, and a daily live show at noon Eastern, Monday through Friday. You don't want to miss any of the fantastic content, so hit that subscribe button.